Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about integrating something like this, where we've got an exponential function and the trigonometric function sine x, or in some cases it might even be cosine x. And I've got some similar types here. This one we've got e to the x cosine x and e to the 2x sine 3x, e to the minus 3x cosine 5x. And each of these are handled in exactly the same way. We use integration by parts, but we need to apply a special method, as I'll show you in this example. It's exactly the same for all of these. So what we do is let i, obviously you can have any letter you like, be equal to this integral. In this case, the integral of e to the x sine x with respect to x. And then we use integration by parts. And we need to take one of these parts as being u and the other part as being dv dx. And with questions like this, it doesn't matter which part you take as u. So I'm going to take the first part, then e to the power x as being the u, and the sine x as being my dv by dx. What I'd encourage you to do is try this question afterwards by letting e to the x be the dv dx and sine x being the u. You should arrive at exactly the same answer. So in the usual way, what we do is we take one part, the u part, that would be e to the power x, and we multiply it by the integral of the other part. So the integral of sine x will be minus cosine x. And then it's minus the integral of what we've just integrated, which was minus cosine x, and multiply it by the differential of the first part, u. Differential of e to the x with respect to x is still e to the x. And we're integrating all of this with respect to x. So cleaning up this first term here, we've got minus e to the x cosine x, and then for this one, cleaning this up, we've got the two negatives there, which gives us a positive. And just putting the e to the x at the front, we don't need the brackets then. So we've got e to the x cos x, and that's integrated with respect to x. And what we've got to do now is integrate this again by parts. So I'll let the e to the x be the u, and the cosine of x be dv by dx. And if we just copy down the first term here, minus e to the x cosine of x, then we've got by parts, I'll just put a bracket up here, give it a square bracket, okay? Then we've got the first part, e to the power x, multiplied by the integral of cosine x, which is going to be sine x. I don't need brackets here for this one, it's not ambiguous. Then it's minus the integral of the part we've just integrated, which was sine x. I'll put that in brackets there. Multiplied by the differential of the u part. Differential of e to the x then is still e to the x. And we integrate all of that with respect to x. And then just close off that bracket, that square bracket there. And cleaning this up again, okay, I've got for the first term here, minus e to the x cosine x. And then opening up this bracket, I've got plus e to the x sine x. And then we've got negative the integral of e to the x sine x. And that's integrated with respect to x. Now if I start to integrate this again, it's just going to keep going on. And this is the problem that we face. It seems as if it's just going to be never-ending. But what we've got is that we call this i. So if I call this i, then factorizing across these two terms here, we've got e to the x, I'll write this term first because it's positive. That's sine x, and then we've got this one here, 
minus cosine x. And I'll just call this i. So we've got minus i. And there'll be also a constant of integration, which I'll call c. Now all I need to do is add i to both sides. So therefore I have 2i equals e to the power x sine x minus cosine x and plus that constant of integration c. And so to get the value of the integral i, all I need to do is divide both sides by 2. So we end up with i equaling this term divided by 2, so that's e to the x over 2, or half e to the x, multiplied with all of sine x minus cosine x, and then half this constant. So I've either got c over 2, or I could just call it another constant. I'll just call it a, okay? So I hope that's given you some idea then on how to handle these types of integrals. And as I said earlier, it doesn't matter which part here you call u and dv dx. Do experiment. Switch this round, okay? And call sine x u and e to the x dv dx, and you should find you end up with exactly the same answer. Okay?